Whenever you're working with dates inside an application, it's often helpful in the user interface to provide some kind of calendar. So if the user is choosing a date through a date field, you may want to provide a calendar for some kind of date picker. Or if you are browsing uh, records in the database, you may want to provide a calendar view to browse them by date. I want to show you how to do both of these inside this episode. So the application we're working with here is a blogging application where we have some articles, but really anywhere you have a, a date as a critical part of the application, it would be a good idea to consider using a calendar for that as well. So the first thing I want to show you here is when we're editing an article or creating one, we can choose a publishing date. And right now we're just using the classic Rails date picker. But I want to provide a calendar view as an alternative for choosing the date. Now calendars are pretty difficult to make from scratch, but thankfully there are a number of third-party solutions for doing pretty much anything you want with calendars and dates. Uh, one solution for working with a date picker is the calendar date select plugin available for Rails. This is using uh, a helper method to work with prototype for providing a way to input a date select through JavaScript. But I'm not going to go with this solution because I prefer using jQuery and an unobtrusive solution. Even though it's not really Rails specific, I want to cover it here because I think it's a good way to go. One of the most popular solutions to this problem is the date picker provided inside the jQuery UI library. And this allows you to assign unobtrusively a calendar to any text field. So when you click on the text field, calendar pops up and you can just click on a date. And there's a lot of customizability as well through this option. And when you want to uh, customize the way the themes look, you can use the theme roller and then download the customized theme to make it look just the way you want. And then once you download those themed files, you can just include those files inside your application layout file. Now, if you want to get up and running quickly and are just not really concerned about customization at the beginning, another alternative is just to include the Google's Ajax API version. And so we can do that here by just pasting in a couple lines of code and we instantly have access to this jQuery UI interface along with a given theme style sheet here without having to download any files and mess with that. So it's a nice way to get up and running quickly. Now just a quick side note, uh, this is a Rails 2 application, but if you're working with Rails 3, make sure to include the Rails JS file for jQuery, which I show in episode 205. So now that our jQuery UI library is included, we can work on changing this date select field here to a text field where we have the calendar pop-up. So we can just change this to a text field. And then we want to add the calendar unobtrusively. So we would do that inside our application JS file. So inside of here, we can include the necessary JavaScript. In this case, we want to add a DOM ready function. And um, inside of here, we will just grab a hold of the, uh, let's see, this article published on is the name of the text field. And then and we just add date picker onto here. And that will add the date picker calendar to that text field when it gets focused. So now when we go and edit a given article, we're able to select a date using the calendar when we click on the published on field, and we can really set it to any date and Rails will automatically translate that to the proper date in the database. And you can see that by when we click edit again, that date is now the published on date. So now that we've got a date picker working, what about the other side of the story where we want to browse records in the database through a calendar view? So let's say instead of just listing the articles here, we want to display a calendar and display the article names and the given dates the calendar or the articles were published on. This might not be the most efficient for a blog, but you might want to provide it as an alternative way for browsing the records. There are several solutions to this problem and the right one kind of depends on the needs of your application. If you need records to span multiple days uh, across the calendar, then you may want to check out the event calendar plugin, which I'll show you a picture here. You can see that it allows a given event or any kind of record really to span multiple days. So it's a good if you have a given start time and end time and it needs to be displayed in the calendar view this way. Alternatively, if you don't need records to span multiple days in a calendar, I recommend you check out the Table Builder plugin. This offers a helper method called Calendar4, which allows you to easily group a given set of records into days in a calendar and loop through them. So uh, this is what I'm going to use because it really fits our, the needs of our application perfectly. So we can install this plugin with a simple script plugin, install, and then the URL to the Git repository. 
So currently this is what our articles index action looks like and what we want to do is change this to have a calendar view. And so we can add a div here. Let's make a div called calendar. And then inside of here we can use our calendar for helper method provided by the plugin. And then just say calendar for uh, all the articles. And then for each of these, well, actually this block only gets executed once and it passes in a calendar object, which inside of that, what you do is call calendar.day. For each day, this block will be executed. So it passes in the date of the given day and along with a list of articles which fall on that given day. And so you can do anything you want inside of here for each of the days of the calendar. So for example, we can just output the given day of the month. Now there's one more thing we need to do here, and that is in this calendar day call, we need to tell it what attribute on the article we want to use for uh, grouping by the days. So in this case, we say day method, and we tell it the published on date attribute, and that will uh, group the articles by the published on date. So now when we reload this index action here, we no longer get a list of articles, but a calendar looking set of dates. It's not very pretty yet, but we can get there. It's amazing what a little bit of CSS can do to make things look nicer. So I'll just paste in some code here to add styling to our calendar. And reload our page here, and voila, things are looking quite a bit nicer. Now I would like to add some um, days at the top here so we know um, what day of the week it is. And we can do that back in our index action here by pasting in a line of code that looks something like this. Using the calendar head method, we just list out the days of the week that we want the way we want it to look and then hit reload, and there's the days of the week at the top here. Now it would be nice if we had some kind of month selector, so it tells you me the current month with arrows on the left and right side, um, allowing me to change the current month. To accomplish this, I'm going to start in my articles controller in the index action, which is that index action we're working on, and add a date variable, and this will hold the date of the month that we want to display as our calendar. So for now, let's just default this to the current day. So now going back to our view, what I want to do is display our name of our month inside our calendar here at the top and also change our calendar for to be the month of the given date. So we can say the year should be the date year and the month should be the date month. And this way, whatever date represents, we will change our calendar based off of that. And when I reload the page here, you can see that we now have a month at the top here and what I want to do is add um, arrows on the left and right side to change the current month. It might look something like this. So let me just replace this month tag here and add arrows on the left and right side. And so what we're doing is changing a month parameter inside of our index action URL and basically specifying the previous month or the next month. And then we can change this in our controller to change our date. So going back to our controller, we can change this date variable so that if a month parameter is set, then it will uh, parse that month string. Um, and otherwise, it'll just use the current month. And now when we reload the page, you can see we have arrows on the left and right side. They're already styled, but you can use it to change the current month. And notice it's changing the month parameter in the URL. So that gets translated to that date variable. So all seems to be working. Now let's actually make this calendar useful by displaying our articles inside of the day that they fall on. So we already have access to this articles array here, which uh, the calendar for method provides for us. So what we want to do here is we can display these however we want. So I'll just use a list here and we'll just loop through all of our articles and then link to a given article and just go to that specific article. And I've already styled this, but I do need to make this a list here. There we go. And when we reload our page here, you can see there's our articles inside of our given dates that they fall on in the published on attribute. So we can just click on one to go to that specific article and it all seems to work. So that's it for displaying a given record inside of days in a calendar. So as you can see in this episode, it's not too difficult to use calendars in your application for setting dates and browsing records. So I encourage you to consider it as an alternative user interface uh, where it fits.